The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Greetings programs and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. Matthew here, you there, and this is a Zybernaut mobile assistant for computer. Uh, it was this weird sort of late 90s idea of what the 21st century of mobile computing was supposed to be like. It's a terrible form factor. You wear it on your belt and, and you have this big monstrosity headset that makes you look like something out of Star Trek. But it, it's interesting. It's a piece of retro computing history. This one happens to be dead on arrival. So we're either going to try and get it working or we're just going to rebuild it with modern components. So let's get started. Amazing hacks, inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Okay, so the Zybernauts is weird sort of relic of retro computing from a weird kind of transitional era, uh, the late 90s, early 2000s. And um, this unit, because it was kind of DOA, I want to try to rebuild that as close as possible to the original spec and the original uh, aesthetic as I can using modern components. So bypassing all of the proprietary stuff that's inside, we're gonna rebuild it with you know, more or less open source stuff. So first off, we're gonna start with our main little box. Please excuse the crudity of this drawing. I didn't have time to paint it or build it to scale. Back in the day, that took a whole bunch of computing power. Now we can really just do that on a SBC, a Raspberry Pi. Um, so a Pi 3B Plus, I think, is what we're going to use. That will then take care of most of the problem. So we'll put uh, Windows 98 on there we'll be able to uh, do the mouse deal right here we'll run that from an arduino we'll make a little uh, joystick type mouse from the arduino and then run that into the raspberry pi as an input device now on the headset i don't have the original uh, little acrylic thing that hung off the front end that simulated the monitor. So like you had this little thing on the boom and that would project out and it would reflect off of this thing. So what I'm going to do instead is probably put like a little 1.8 inch TFT LCD in there facing me so that I can see it kind of out of the corner of my vision and I can see what's going on. It'll be up close enough, I'll be able to uh, I'll be able to see it fairly, fairly clearly squinto vision, uh, but it'll, it'll work okay. Uh, oh, and the original uh, keyboard, of course, those things, you can't find them anywhere. They're all, uh, this thing's obscure enough, but the accessories, oh my gosh. The keyboard, we're going to have to uh, remake, and it was this weird kind of gauntlet thing that you would wear. So there's your keyboard, and you would, you know, wear that uh, on your arm, you know, that thing. So we're going to have to build something for that as well. So we've got that. Oh, and... Of course, we're also going to need a, um, a battery. We're gonna have to have some kind of cabling to go from here into the system here. And then uh, maybe maybe I can get away with a wireless keyboard here. And, uh, that way I don't have to have another wire going around here. But that is essentially the idea. So we have the system, we have the screen, we have the keyboard. We have the mouse, and we have to rebuild and replicate all of this. Oh, and the battery. And, you know, I need to have ports, so let's USB. I need to have some ports in there, so we'll throw uh, probably a USB hub in there to try and get a little extra functionality out of this thing. So that's the plan. I'm sticking to it, and let's get this thing going. So the first thing you gotta do is just take and unplug these guys. Wow. So this is the power. Yeah, this is power. So here's a battery pack. It's a bank of 
18650s. That's an ME202BB lithium ion rechargeable battery, 11.1 .1 volt output. And it goes into this, uh, this uh, DB9 connector, except it's only five pins. Now here's this big guy here. This is labeled port replicator. And it's this big honking proprietary kind of thing uh, to the Zyberport Mini. Uh, so here we have a standard PS2 plug for a keyboard mouse and FDD, I'm assuming is floppy disk drive. Uh, considering this age. So let's just take a look and see what we got. This looks like it's uh, two uh, PCIe slots right in here underneath that guy. So far, I have not even been able to get this thing to power on. So that's been the first challenge. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, so this is our hard drive. This is this is interesting. This is like a like a super viscous gel, like ballistic gel. That's really clever. So this is apparently the uh, shock absorbing mechanism because it's a that's a that's a spinny hard drive. You can't like just walk around with the thing and be like doing this all the time when it's trying to read the disc and that's just that doesn't work for a hard drive. And then underneath we got uh, 128 megs of RAM. Woo! Big potatoes. So. Oh boy, all right, that's most of it. Aha, now we can kind of see what's going on. There you go. All right, so here's our, our little nib mouse. Now that I've got this whole thing taken apart, I've got to kind of noodle on it and see uh, where I want to go with this thing. So uh, let me do that, and then we'll start putting this thing together. So before we start putting this whole system together, I want to start with the human interface hardware. So the mouse and the keyboard, that's, that's the big thing right now to get started. And then uh, we'll work our way up from there. So you probably saw this in the teardown. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is the mouse module. It is a track point style mouse. I want to replicate this as closely as possible. So this has come apart. This is the actual works inside. So this is your little uh, mouse uh, nub pointer thing. And it communicates to this little microcontroller here, I assume, and translates all that into mouse movement. Essentially what you've got here is a pair of strain gauges. It's an analog value coming out uh, based on the amount of displacement on the X and the Y axes. The problem I have here is uh, this is going to be really hard to interface with. I'm going to kind of wing it a little bit. So instead of using this guy, I'm going to use one of these little um, analog thumbstick uh, controllers, one of these little joysticks here uh, from Adafruit. So I've got this and we're going to pair that with a uh, 32U4 feather board that I've got left over from the Project Quick Shot. That was the, the NES Zapper. If you wanna watch that video, that's at element14.com forward slash presents as well under Project Quick Shot. So we're gonna put this together. We're gonna get a, a little bit of a, a mouse going on. So same idea as this, it's still gonna be moving the mouse across the screen, you know, based on displacement, uh, but just a little better hardware, a little easier to work with and a little less fidgety. So let's get started on that. I need to, um, I need to solder some breakouts together to get this thing on a breadboard and let's see where we go. Okay, so I got this breadboarded and uh, wrote a little Arduino sketch here. Uh, that basically turns this uh, this joystick into a, a touch point, track point uh, style pointer mouse thingy. So just a quick uh, rundown of the code here. Uh, we are going to include the uh, mouse library, uh, define a few buttons, uh, define a few pins for those buttons. First thing we're gonna do is actually, uh, actually have a calibration sequence in here on this one. Uh, probably should have put that in uh, Project Quick Shot, but I didn't think about it. <laughs> so, I mean, 2.0, whatever. So, I have this uh, quick little calibration sequence here. It takes five seconds. It reads the analog pins. They should be 
roughly the same, like 5'11", 5'12", somewhere in that neighborhood, and then um, determines their value, averages it out, and finds that that's the zero point. Turn the mouse on. Same as with uh, Project Quick Shot and the Air Mouse. Uh, this time though, we have two buttons. We have left and right buttons. So we are going to be checking each of those uh, for uh, being depressed. And then of course, um, our little uh, move mouse uh, just reads the analog value, does a little math to it. And as we move the joystick, it moves the cursor very nicely. <laughs> Okay, so the original Zybernaut had this weird, goofy, like, arm-mounted keyboard where you, you have to, like, you know, type over here on your arm with one hand. Very futuristic, futuristic, very extreme, very cyberpunk. Uh, I want to replicate that as closely as possible. Of course, we're using newer components here. So what I've got here is this little generic uh, Bluetooth keyboard, little miniature keyboard. And uh, I have printed out this little piece, sort of a proto bracer, uh, if you will. And so the idea here is just to mount this guy right on top of this piece, but uh, essentially just mount the keyboard on here just like that. And then uh, put a couple of straps here on the back side, and that'll just strap right onto the arm right there, right on your forearm and you'll be able to, uh, you know, type. So let me get this going and we'll get this. This is starting to come together finally. Now I have a bracer keyboard. So now I can type, sort of. A little hunt and peck, one finger typing. That's why this is a terrible form factor. No wonder this thing never took off. Okay, so it looks like we got her paired up on the uh, Raspberry Pi here. So it's got a little bit of a, I got a touchpad on here so I can do this as a mouse too. Oh my goodness. And then uh, we make sure that that, hello world. Okay, so this is all set to go. Now we just need to put the rest of this thing together and we're in business. Putting Windows 98, onto a Raspberry Pi is a little bit of a complex maneuver, mostly because we're dealing with different architectures. So um, the Raspberry Pi, of course, has an ARM architecture and uh, Windows 98 uses an i386 architecture, a 32-bit architecture versus 64-bit architecture. So two very, very different programming architectures. The only way to do it really is to emulate. So we have to put a virtual machine emulator on the Raspberry Pi, and we're going to use one called QEMU. First thing we're gonna do is get that installed on the Raspberry Pi. And in order to do that, we're just going to simply sudo apt get install QEMU. Okay, yes. Fantastic. That's done, that's set up. Now I need, actually, because the performance is gonna be better over here, I need to install QEMU on my Windows machine. So let me get that set up. Okay, so QEMU is a little bit different on Windows. It installs with like a traditional Windows uh, binary executable, but it runs as a, uh, it runs as a command prompt. So uh, that's what we have to do here. We're in the C program files QEMU folder here. And first thing I'm gonna do is create a, create a virtual hard drive. QEMU image create, we're gonna call it win98.image and we're going to make it four gigabytes which is the same size as the original hard drive that was in the Zybernaut. So do that. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to install Windows 98 onto that virtual hard drive using uh, one of these old uh, PC restore disks that I happen to have. So let's uh, get that going. Put that in the drive there and we're going QEMU system i386 
86, which is our architecture. The CPU is a Pentium 2, 256 megs of memory. The CD-ROM is the host's drive E. We're going to boot from drive D, which is the virtual CD-ROM drive, using the virtual hard drive. Let's see, colon, slash users. At, oh, oh, that's her. Win98.img. Okay. All right. We're just going to let that go. Let's go ahead and put that in full screen. Okay. Uh, so we're going to boot from the CD-ROM. Start Windows 98 from CD-ROM. Oh man, it's been a while since I've seen these, these little prompts and, and notifications. Set up Windows now, press enter. Okay, configure unallocated disk space. Uh, use the large disk support and restart the computer. Okay, formatting the hard drive. Which is funny because it kind of does this in real time. It's weird. It's like kind of cycle accurate. Oh, the drive's formatted, fantastic. Oh, this is my, the old school Microsoft scan disk. Oh man. Oh man. Memories, memories. Um, welcome to Windows 98. Congratulations on choosing Windows 98, the software that makes your computer more powerful, reliable, manageable, and entertaining. With Windows 98, you can connect to the internet quickly and easily. And Windows 98 is even easier to use than Windows 95, and, and well, yeah, it is. Okay, get all the hardware installed. Hey, look at that, look at that! Into Windows 98, all right, sweet. Now, what I need to do is get it from, uh, take this, uh, this hard drive image from over here, and we're gonna put it onto the Raspberry Pi. We're just gonna copy it over with a, uh, one of these, hand it onto jump drives. So we've got the uh, system image moved over to the Raspberry Pi. Now let's test her out. Hold on to your butts. It's booting. What do we got? What do we got? Right on. There it is. Now it's a little slow, but again, it's not unlike something that is maybe a lower end PC from this era. So look at that. Hey, it works. And so we'll get that. We'll put this into Project Cyberpunk. And uh, I think we're gonna have ourselves a nice little uh, late 90s era wearable. To get the uh, Adafruit display to work with the Raspberry Pi, we're gonna use Notro's FB TFT driver for Linux. And thankfully, uh, this display is officially supported by the driver. So all we really got to do here is go to the GitHub and grab the uh, pinout for this driver. So it is a, uh, it is a SPI interface, a, a serial peripheral interface, a SPI. Uh, I know SPI interface is redundant, but whatever, it just sounds better. So we're going to have, we've got a handful of pins here. We've got light, MISO, MOSI, clock, chip select, data command, reset, uh, VCC, and ground. And then for the Raspberry Pi. All we gotta do is just get the pins for this. Mossy goes to Mossy. Clock goes to clock. TFTCS goes to CE0. Data command goes to GPIO24. Reset goes to GPIO25. Uh, VCC goes to 3.3 volt because this is a 3.3 volt screen and ground goes to ground. So that's our pinout. Let's uh, coordinate this with the, um, the pinout uh, diagram on element14.com and we'll get this thing wired up. So here on the Pi, uh, first thing I gotta do is turn on the spy interface. See, even Raspberry Pi says spy interface, okay? So it's not just me, all right? And I want to disable the overscan. All right, so not, because that will have issues. Now we're done in there, and uh, apparently I need to reboot, so we'll just reboot. Okay, now we need to edit the configuration file for FBTFT. And what we're gonna do 
is we are going to tell it to use Adafruit 1.8, because that's the module name in, within the driver. Boop, boop. Reboot. Oh yeah, look at that. It's turned on. It's turned on. Okay, so now we've got the driver actually set up. Now what I've got to do is install a, a frame buffer application. So what it's going to do is it's going to copy the graphics that are going out from the Pi to the HDMI going out to here. Uh, it's going to copy those over the spy interface over to our little screen. So we basically have a little, like a little mirrored screen, which would be nice uh, because I'll be able to plug in an HDMI cable and you'll be able to see what's going on on the screen. Um, at the same time that I see it on my little eyepiece, so it'll be, uh, be nice. In order to do that, we're going to use, uh, Tessanicorn has written a, uh, Raspberry Pi frame buffer copy application, so it's over here on GitHub. One last thing we gotta do, because we want this to run on boot, is sudo nano, etc. rc.local. I'm just gonna add this to our boot list. Okay, there, there. All right. All right, screen comes on, lights up. <laughs> there it is. And I'll be able to use this thing and we're gonna have ourselves a, uh, a rebuilt uh, Zybernaut. Okay, so here we are. So I've got uh, Windows 98 running here. I've got this thing set up on the desktop uh, so that I can get the HDMI so you can actually see what's going on. Still having some trouble with the headset, so it's not quite working properly. This is terrible. This is, this is, <laughs> this is terrible. Uh, this is probably the worst form factor I could ever think of for a PC. What in the world were they thinking? Even with this, like, on your belt, like, over here, it's vaguely more comfortable, but it just really, uh, it, with Squinto Vision over here, and just the thing, I gotta wear it on my head, and it's heavy. This is not a good typing solution. Let's try this out. This is the worst this is the most uncomfortable keyboard I have ever used. Like I've used these before, you know, as like thumb keyboards and they're okay. This is terrible. This one handed, like tiny form factor. It's just, oh my goodness. And then the screen in your way, this just gives me a headache. Oh my gosh. This is giving me a headache. Like what in the world were they thinking? Okay, so so there's that. Um, this is just really hard to use with this little tiny screen. And and it doesn't help that the tiny screen doesn't hardly work. So I've got some troubleshooting to do there. I think it's actually got, uh, I think it's a low voltage issue. I don't, because I have such a long cable, I think there's too much resistance in that cable and I think it's actually not getting enough power uh, to the screen. That's the only thing I can really figure out so far. Uh, if you have uh, troubleshooting tips for something like this, uh, let me know in the community at element14.com forward slash presents. There's also a link down in the doobly doo. Uh, takes you to this video and let me know in the comments if you got an idea of what's actually wrong with this thing. I mean, it's just barely showing anything if, if it, it, well, right now it just went out, so. Oh, but hey, look, it's Minesweeper. This mouse is not at all comfortable to use either. Uh, let's see. Oh, dadgummit. Anyway, so that's Windows 98 on the Zybernaut MA4. 
uh, well, the rebuilt Zybernaut MA4. So this was an interesting experiment in retro computing. Um, yeah, um, what other types of ridiculous uh, relics of the old retro computer scene have you messed around with? Let us know in the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. Also down in the doobly-doo, there is a link. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Rec I'm gonna get to rest my eyes for a bit, and um, in the meantime, ah, my name is Matthew. Tally ho, y'all.